What's up everyone, my name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer and today I'm going to show you how to create a responsive navigation component using Framer. Framer, for those who are unfamiliar, is an app that's very similar to Figma. The main difference is that it's web-based and you can actually preview your designs as live code on the web by hitting the play button at the top right. That said, let's go ahead and start creating our nav bar. First thing that I'm going to do is hit the T key on my keyboard and I'm gonna type the words my Framer site and then I am going to change the font from intermedium to bold and then we'll change the type size to 20 pixels and then we've tracked it in a little bit like so the next thing I'm going to do is copy and paste this one time and let's bring that down here I am going to change this font to medium and then I'm going to change the size to 16 pixels and then I'm just going to change this here to say about and then it changes like so if I hit the option key and click and drag, I'm able to duplicate this. So we'll change the text again to say products, and then we will do it one more time. Instead of products, we'll have the say pricing. So the last thing I'm going to do for now is create a button, and I am going to just go into the insert section and type the word button, and I'll click and drag one over. Let's change the font from the default, which is DM Sans, back to enter. So I'll type that on my keyboard and then we'll have that be medium like these other things. But let's change this size down to 16 and then we'll bring the letter spacing in minus 0.2. So it's just tracked in a little bit more. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these things here and I will right click and then I will add a stack like so. Stacks are kind of like auto layout. So the next thing I will do here is I will change the width to fit content and the height to fit content as well. And then in terms of gap, I'm going to change this gap to be 24 pixels. So there's a little bit more spacing between all these elements. So now that I've got that, I've got the basics of my navigation. So let's drag this to the top left and right. I'll actually have this be all the way on the left and all the way on the right. I select both of these and then I'll align them and then right click to add a stack. And then you can see everything gets pushed to the middle. I can change that by going to distribute and changing that from center to space between but we don't want this to be fully on the left and right respectively. So let's change the padding to 24 and then that will add padding, but you can see it's not changing on the top and bottom. But if I click on height here, change that to fit content, which we set as auto, that fixes it. Now I've got this header component, but I don't have any styling. So let's add a white fill and then we're gonna add a border on the bottom. So if I go to width here, rather than having it be on each side, I'm gonna have it only be on the bottom. So if I go to zero, hit tab, zero, let's keep that bottom border, but we'll get rid of this left one. And then instead of it being this really intense black color, I'm going to change this to be a lighter gray, like so. It's hard to see the division with just the gray divider, so I'll also add a shadow. I'm gonna change the Y offset here to four pixels, so it's a little bit further away from the bottom. And then we'll change the blur to be 16 pixels. So now you've got a more dramatic shadow. It's a little bit intense, so if I click on this opacity in the color, I will change this from 25 to 5%. So, so now we have a basic header navigation component. So if I go up here and go to layers, let's change the name of this to be navigation. And then I will right click on this and then create a component. We'll call this navigation. And then you can see I'm brought to this component view where I'm able to edit all my components. This is my first variant. If I hit command R, I can rename it. And so let's rename this desktop. And then I'm gonna make my tablet variant. By default, the tablet breakpoint on Framer is 810 pixels wide. So if I go back here, let's go to variant. And then I will again hit command R to rename this tablet and then let's set the width of this to be 810 pixels and now I have the desktop and tablet variants of my navigation. Next I need to create the expanded state of my mobile navigation. So let's create another variant. We will name this mobile open 
and then I am going to change this from horizontal direction to vertical, and you can see things stack on top of each other here. The default width for mobile on Framer is 390 pixels, so let's go ahead and change that. And then I'm also going to change this section. We're going to have this vertically stack rather than horizontally. And then I'm also going to add 24 pixels of padding on the top so that there's a little bit of distance from this element right here. Next, I'm going to go to the insert button and I am going to type icon and then I will click on this feather icon here. Let's set the width and height to 32 pixels. We'll set this color to be black. Let's go ahead and drag this in. And one last thing that I need to change is instead of a home icon, we want this to be a close icon, which for the feather icons in Framer, it's an X. And so now I've got all of these things stacked on top of each other, which isn't quite right. But if I select both the X icon and the title of the site and I right click, I can add a stack. Let's set the direction to horizontal, the distribution to space between. But again, this isn't quite right. And that's because my width and height weren't set to fit content. Um, let's actually have this be fill, not fit. And then again, we need to change this back to space between. Then I'm gonna take this my framer site, then I'm gonna move this to the left. And then one last thing that I'll do is I'll take this button and I'll have it fill the contents. And then I'll also have the parent layer fill the contents of this entire section. That is the expanded version of my nav. Now let's create the collapsed version, which what I'll do here is take this whole section and very importantly, I'll first reduce the opacity, which basically helps this animate in more smoothly. And then I'll change the, the visibility status from yes to no. And then you can see that this shrinks down. And then one other thing I need to do is change this X icon to a menu icon. I'm scrolling up, but if I typed the word menu, it would auto go to that icon and I can change it out. I have this mobile navigation, but these aren't linked up right now. So what I need to do is select this hamburger icon and then I'll click on this little lightning bolt and then I will drag that over to here and then I'll click on this X and I'll drag that back like so. And now if I go back to the home section, you can see something happened with both the desktop and the tablet versions where they're a bit bigger. And so what's actually going on here is I added all of these stacks to the mobile navigation and that was actually applied over here, but the elements that aren't included were hidden. And to revert that, I need to go to width and then change this to fit content, change the height to fit content as well. And I'll also do that for my desktop component. So now I've got a desktop component, a tablet component, and then I'm going to create a breakpoint for my phone. And let's select this navigation instance and let's change this to mobile. And then I am going to hit the play icon so now I've got a live preview. And so if I drag this out, shrink it down, you can see I've got this hamburger icon. If I click on that, the navigation expands and collapses like you would expect it to. One last thing I can do is I can actually publish this. And then if I publish it, it will be linked out on an actual web page. So this is a real web page. It says made in Framer because this is the free version, but this is an actual hosted link that you could share if you wanted to. So that's it. You now know how to create a very basic navigation for a website using Framer that you can instantly convert into real code without writing a single line of it. So I'm gonna be doing more Framer tutorials like this because I'm trying to learn the product myself and I found that teaching it is actually a very helpful way to learn. You don't see it here, but I messed this up several times before I was able to record the video for it. But that's it. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of the basics of Framer, how to create a navigation component, and then how to make that responsive across your designs. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I will see you in the next video.